Hey guys, and welcome to Duality 9X. We've got an amazing video lined up for you guys today. So before I start, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you are, welcome back to Duality 9X. Hey, I'm, I'm super excited about this uh, video that we're gonna show you, but before I start, if you guys have been following our content, we're extremely grateful for all the support. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Today we're going to switch gears a little bit. Today we're going to talk about um, something that's quite near and dear to many people's hearts and it does fall in line with creepy, weird, strange and it, depending on who you are, it could even be quite scary. And I'm talking about fake foods. And for the last several years, this topic has been really picking up steam. Uh, I've, I've visited a lot of countries before. I've heard and I've been warned about restaurants and um, you know, hotels, like a lot of high-end establishments, you know, serving fake food. And I, I honestly, I couldn't really believe it. it. It didn't really make sense to me how, how a company could actually produce fake food. And the more I started to kind of, you know, get into it and kind of do my research, and uh, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked with what I was able to see. So today I'm going to kind of give you a little glimpse into that. Um, you know, there's, you know, the reason why a lot of food manufacturers are probably doing what they do. I mean, there's probably a, uh, a number of reasons that doesn't make it right. Okay. But the reason, the number one reason I think why a lot of food manufacturers are, in, you know, um, are trying to put these fake chemical or these chemicals and, you know, all kinds of preservatives and additives to their food. Uh, number one reason is to prolong the life of their product uh, that, that sits on the shelves of our grocery stores, right? And, and the reason that's important for them is because the longer their product sits on those shelves, the higher likelihood of somebody coming by and picking up that product and purchasing it, right? The longer it sits out there, the more exposure it gets, the better the chance that somebody's going to come and buy it. Now, if food in its raw form just sits on the shelves of a grocery store, uh, you know, there's all kinds of factors that could like destroy that food, right? From temperature to uh, the conditions, uh, you know, I mean, there, there's a ton of different things. So food creators, food manufacturers are starting to get very, very creative. And they're tinkering around with these chemicals and additives and various preservatives uh, to, to try to really prolong the life of their product. But to what cost? So a lot of people are starting to get sick consuming these foods and more and more sicknesses are starting to happen and this is why I said over the last several years uh, I've noticed a trend an upward trend in terms of how many people are getting sick from the foods that they're eating and what's happening is it's overburdening our healthcare system but what's happening is that people are uh, consuming so much of this fake food that it's starting to cause other problems uh, in their system so I want to get into this and, and sorry for the long intro guys, but I think this is really important because this kind of segues into what we're talking about here. And uh, I think you guys are going to be in for a shock. So without further ado, I got my cup guys and sit back, relax, let's go. This is actual footage of fake beef's production process in the factory. Would you eat such meat? Would you eat these inflammable noodles? In China, the prevalence of fake products is a well-known fact, and amidst the surge of counterfeit goods, the issue of fake food particularly stands out. Food fraud not only poses a grave threat to people's health, but also erodes trust within society. Today, let's delve into the, some of the shocking fake food items found in the Chinese food market. Fake beef. Let's begin with the fake beef that you saw at the beginning of the video. Due to the high cost of beef, which is approximately 160 to 180 yuan, 22 to 26 USD per kilogram, businesses often cut costs by using cheaper meats such as chicken, duck or pork, which costs around 20 yuan, 3 USD per kilogram, to create synthetic meat. To enhance the beef flavor, they add ingredients like beef essence or beef tendons. After these ingredients are mixed and marinated, gelatin is then added to mimic the texture of beef, making it chewy and elastic. Some manufacturers even craft a beef-like surface texture, making it hard to distinguish from real beef. 
Other sellers use leftover beef scraps such as lymph nodes and internal organs to produce fake beef. The this is interesting guys. So like they're, they're, the, a lot of these food manufacturers, they're mixing um, other meat that's less expensive and mixing it with these chemicals and preservatives and things that we're talking about and adding like coagulants like gelatin and things like that to kind of give it that uh, chewiness and that texture and that same kind of feel so technically it's it's kind of mimicking what's real but it's not real and people are being fooled this is interesting these low-cost scraps are ground into minced meat mixed with additives to produce synthetic minced meat fully consumers into thinking it's real minced beef to cut even more costs some Unscrupulous businesses opt for using meat from deceased cows or aged sows to make fake beef. To make the fake beef's color resemble fresh beef, they add coloring agents such as carmine and nitrates. There are even some reckless merchants who simply combine eggs and starch or use plant protein to create a kind of composite meat. They then add various additives to make this substance closely resemble real beef in appearance wow. and texture, though it contains no meat at all. Fake beef is everywhere. Can you believe it? When you order a dish of boiled beef or stir-fried beef at a restaurant, wow. what you might be consuming may not be real beef. Today, let's take a closer look at the type of fake beef that has dominated the restaurant industry for over a decade. That is Mongolian meat. When you hear Mongolian meat, you might be thinking of Mongolian beef, but there's actually no beef in here. This Mongolian meat comes in three different grades. The lowest grade contains stuck meat and a bunch of additives, priced at 6 to 8 yuan. The mid-range option includes some pork and duck meat along with a heap of additives, priced between 8 to 10 yuan. The high-grade version consists of pork and a bunch of additives, priced around 10 to 15 yuan. The man in the video reveals that a bag of Mongolian meat contains two smaller bags, enough for two servings. The cost of one portion of restaurant served boiled beef is 5 yuan, while they sell it to you for 58 yuan per bowl, allowing the owner mm. to make a profit of 50 yuan. What's more, we can see yeah. that the list of ingredients on the packaging wow. of Mongolian meat includes pork scraps, duck scraps, frost sodium citrate, Carangenian and other additives, it's all additives. I, I, I remember we were in Los Angeles and uh, southern, southern LA and we went to this place and they had Mongolian beef. They advertised it as Mongolian beef and they would, you know, stir fry it with broccoli and whatever vegetables that you wanted and tons of noodles and it was super cheap, I remember. Uh, I didn't purchase it, but uh, it was probably one of their more popular dishes because every other person that was coming in was like hey I want them I want this particular dish that had the Mongolian beef uh, really interesting fake beef in Chao Nan New Street in Guangzhou people nowadays are truly clever they can fake just about anything and the fakes look so convincing they've made the tendon they've got the real color it's honestly hard for the naked eye to see through when I bought it at the store the salesperson claimed it was prime beef after cutting it, you can't tear it apart. No idea what kind of glue they use. Cut it open and you'll see. The white part is a glue. If you try burning it with a lighter, it actually catches fire. And it produces a smell just like burning plastic. They're selling this kind of beef for 1 to 200 yuan for wow. half a kilogram. How is fake beef jerky made? As the video shows, first a mold of the beef jerky is created. Once the mold is ready, it is disassembled wow. and refined into a perfect shape. Then the mold so is cleaned. Pork, After that, the ingredients for the fake beef are prepared. Following this, the jerky meat, uh, is baked. Meat. Once cooked, the fake beef jerky is removed and then it undergoes a second coloring and glazing. Oh, Finally, uh, the fake terrible, beef jerky guys. is completed. Speaking fake of meat, well. fake lamb and fake lamb chops have also become a headache for consumers in recent years. During the merchandise slaughter process, lamb is categorized by its parts and then released into the market after passing inspections. 
However, some businesses, in order to cut cost, mix low quality or even spoiled meat with chemical ingredients such as flavorings for processing. Wow. In terms of taste and appearance, these fake lamb chops are almost indistinguishable from real ones. Some businesses use an enzyme that can act as a binding agent, mixing duck and chicken meat with beef, along with the right seasoning to create fake lamb chops. The picture posted here is even more interesting. The man bought lamb chops at a food festival in Shenzhen and oh only realized after taking a bite that there was a chopstick inserted into the meat. The individual humorously remarked that it was another day of falling for tricks. Have you ever witnessed the production process of plastic rice? You'll see white plastic continuously being conveyed into a machine, which then extrudes dough-like substances from the other end. The dough-like object is then put into another machine, and after undergoing processes like wire drawing and threading, the machine produces shiny plastic rice. The same goes in this video. An unidentified gel-like substance is poured into the machine, and what comes out from the other end is rice. Even the popular self-heating rice products that have gained popularity in recent years have their hidden surprises. The rice you can find in the supermarket is usually crystal clear, with distinct grains. In contrast, the rice in self-heating meals appear like long, thread-like strands. If you look closely, you'll even notice some tiny bubbles within, forming irregular elliptical strands. So it turns out that what's been sold is not real rice, but reconstituted rice, which is made primarily from rice, wheat, and cornstarch. Seasonings and food additives are then added, That's and after rice. a certain proportion is determined, the mixture is ground, then processed through extrusion and puffing to form something that looks similar to regular rice. However, because many nutrients are lost during the production oh. process, it's not recommended for long-term consumption. Wow. Lately, there is even a type of rice marketed as natural green rice. It claims to be a specialty from northeast China, but many people from that region have only become aware of it in the last two years. The quality of this green rice, which is advertised as free from colorants and additives, have been the subject of numerous blogger reviews. I've bought some all-natural, non-artificially colored bamboo rice, which cost me 16 and a half yuan per kilogram. This is the most expensive rice I've purchased so far. Let's take a look at its ingredients list. It includes corn flour, spinach flour, mulberry leaf powder, fresh bamboo leaf powder, and water. The ingredient list has anything but rice. The blogger mentioned that this kind of rice looks fresh after cooking, but its color is a bit faded. After cooking, it sticks together like glue, forming a solid oh. mass. The texture when eating is similar to chewing on glue. It could even dislodge your dentures. A man bought a pack of noodles priced 10 yuan for half a kilogram, only to discover something alarming at home. After soaking the noodles in water wow. overnight, not a trace of powder dissolved, and the noodles well, could yeah, even be obviously. stretched. This has shocked them, and apparently he will not be eating it. Another customer mentioned they would never buy noodles from the market again after witnessing a noodle shop owner kneading dough and simply ignore the customers when they asked to select which type of noodle to buy. This raised suspicions. Could the flour used in these noodles be different from what's found in home kitchens? Later, the customer learned from a neighbor who has been running a noodle business for over oh 10 years gosh. that many noodles on the market contain carcinogenic substances like borax to enhance their elasticity and texture. Noodles with borax usually have a smooth surface and are white with a slightly yellow tint. Formaldehyde can also be added to make noodles appear fresher. For noodles that, that don't soften easily, so some producers crazy. add strengthening I'm, agents. I'm starting to think, I eat a lot of rice and noodles, so and others include carcinogenic chemicals like sulfur dioxide to sulfur improve dioxide? the appearance. Despite looking appetizing, these noodles pose potential health risks. To investigate the composition of fake noodles further, a blogger conducted an experiment. Observing the noodle samples under a microscope, the blogger found it strange to see granular substances clearly visible. Moreover, these noodles had strong elasticity, didn't spoil over time, and didn't become sticky. The blogger then used a borax detection kit, which confirmed the presence of borax in these granules. 
Another blogger conducted a simple formaldehyde test. They coated both a boiled and an unboiled noodle sample with a formaldehyde detection solution. After 30 minutes of waiting, the results were revealed. The uncooked noodle showed a moderate to high level of formaldehyde of between 1.1 to 1.2, far exceeding the normal caution level of 0.1. The cooked noodles had levels around 0.5, with slightly lighter coloration indicating that formaldehyde remains even after cooking. Fake tofu. tofu. Tofu, a highly popular and nutritious food, is generally considered a natural product, so normally one should not worry about buying fakes, right? Surprisingly, fake tofu has also appeared in China. Some types of fake tofu are extremely hard with no elasticity when pressed by hand. This type of tofu is suspected to contain industrial gypsum with a significantly excessive chemical content, potentially what? posing carcinogenic risk when consumed excessively. Another variety of fake tofu That's appears white and tasty but emits a lime powder odor. This suggests the use of whitening agents which may adversely affect one's health if consumed in excess. Some unscrupulous merchants even oh add gelatin gosh. during tofu production, making it impossible to soften even after prolonged cooking and is generally unpleasant to eat. There's also tofu with an unusually smooth cut surface, devoid of tofu's natural honeycomb texture, suggesting the addition of coglunits. This type of tofu won't soften even after long periods of cooking. Fake oh, buns. Sticky buns. Consumers dining out need to exercise caution, particularly regarding aluminum buns. Authentic buns naturally have a slight yellow tint, while aluminum buns appear oh. white and soft. Aluminum buns are made using sweetening baking powder containing aluminum sulfate and aluminum hydroxide, which are acidic substances. During steaming, these substances produce carbon dioxide, causing the buns to expand and appear larger and whiter. While these buns may look appealing and taste soft, the aluminum sulfate they contain could pose health risk. Consuming these buns over time can affect bone development and memory oh in gosh. children. A blogger also examined buns made with lymphatic meat under a microscope and found out that the meat appeared darkened in color. Lymphatic tissue, being part of the animal's immune system, contains large amounts of phagocytes that ingest bacteria and viruses, making it susceptible to contamination by pathogens like Salmonella and Staphylococcus aureus, and thus unfit for consumption. Unquarantined pig lymphatic meat could expose consumers to various zoonotic diseases. Fake eggs. The world is full of surprises, as even eggs can be faked. A woman showcased the fake eggs that she bought, noting they often crack in the middle unlike the intact appearance of normal eggs. The egg whites and shells of fake eggs are darker in colour. The most distinctive feature is that the yolks of fake eggs are often a single uniform mass, rather than being dispersed naturally. This may be due to the addition of thickeners, and the ununiformed appearance of yolk colour is achieved through colouring or other chemical wow. methods. The woman expressed concern, showing that these eggs lack any flavour and are entirely spoiled when wow. opened. The production process of fake egg is rather puzzling, primarily involving the mixing of various compounds. These compounds have no nutritional value and long-term consumption can cause harm to the body. The first step is creating fake eggs as to make the egg white. Sodium alginate is mixed with water to form a solution, the base for the egg white. The solution is stirred continuously until it thickens into a substance oh resembling gosh. egg white. The egg yolk is made similarly, but with the addition of colorants like lemon yellow to the sodium alginate solution. This colorful solution is then poured into specially designed molds and solidified in a calcium chloride solution. The eggshell is formed from a mixture of calcium carbonate and other materials placed in molds to achieve the shape of an eggshell. I don't even it's know, It's almost guys. unthinkable that even tea, tea leaves, leaves can be counterfeited. A video showcases a woman demonstrating the process of scenting tea leaves. Pour this fragrance water into a measuring cup, open the air compressor switch, aim the nozzle inside the tea leaf container, and spray some fragrance water into the container while stirring the tea leaves. This is a process of adding fragrance. The end results are finely misted tea leaves. This is what we call fragrance tea. To enhance their appearance, some unethical businesses add artificial colorants to tea leaves during processing. There have been reports of lead chrome green being added.
to green tea, giving it more of a vibrant green appearance. However, this colorant is an industrial pigment that is toxic in nature and should not be used as a food additive. Manufacturers also add sugar to tea leaves, aiming to improve the glossiness and sweetness of the dry tea. The sugars used include edible sugars and artificial sweeteners. Some merchants even make use of inferior materials. Wow, what's, what's supposed to be healthy for you guys? It, it's crazy. I mean, they're faking tea leaves, they fake eggs. What next? Creating blends that are difficult for the average consumer to distinguish. The most common example of this is blending of lower quality Tiaguanyin tea. Tiaguanyin, a tea plant variety and also a name for a specific tea making process, often includes blends of other varieties similar to Tiaguanyin, particularly among many of the cheaper options available on the market. Fake oh, honey man. beehives. Honey as a natural nutritional food is cherished for its unique flavor and numerous health benefits. However, in recent years, some businesses seeking illicit gains have employed various illegal methods to counterfeit honey, flooding the market with fake and substandard products. The most common method of faking honey involves mixing syrup and adding fragrance, making it look like real honey. This deception is hard to discern based solely on appearance. Some businesses feed bees sugar, which in the presence of ample food sources discouraged them from collecting nectar, thereby saving time and increasing honey production at the expense of taste quality. Additionally, some businesses add maltose or sodium clacolamate among with shocked, various guys. additives I'm to shocked. mimic honey. While merely affecting taste might seem harmless, some producers create fake honey by mixing alum and white sugar which with long-term consumption can damage the brain's nervous system, leading to irreversible memory loss. Some unethical businesses use low-cost honey to impersonate high-quality honey, adding corn syrup and flavors to create honey that is difficult to distinguish from the genuine product. To ensure that you are buying trustworthy honey, it is essential to compare products from different sources and purchase from reputable sellers. Unscrupulous merchants may use cheap honey as a substitute for premium honey, adding high fructose corn syrup and flavorings, making it difficult to distinguish from the real product. To purchase good quality honey, consumers should shop around and buy from a trustworthy merchant. In recent years, not only honey, but even beehives have beehives also frequently well, been guys. counterfeited. I bought this for 30 yuan, which comes in a square-shaped box that looks quite appetizing. The seller claimed it to be natural beehive honey, assuring us it could be safely soaked in water and consumed. He explains upon examining a piece of honeycomb, a line can be seen in the middle. This is where the problem lies. There's this substance visible when we pull it apart, and next we'll soak it in lukewarm water to see what happens. It's revealed that the substance is made from industrial paraffin wax, which is a must use wow. when producing artificial honey. It is highly hazardous to the human body as it contains carcinogenic substances like polycystic aromatic hydrocarbons and condensed aromatic hydrocarbons, especially when leached wow. into warm water. I purchased this at the Xu Fang Ping Night Market in Changsha. The stall is called Lao Dai Little Seafood and the sea cucumber is priced at 96 yuan per half a kilogram. Did you think this was sea cucumber? I ate quite a bit before realizing that something was amiss. This is fake sea cucumber made from fish mole, but sold at seafood. There have been reports of a well-known restaurant in Dalian which used sponge as a substitute for sea cucumber. A tourist in Rizao, Shandong, bought seafood for 60 yuan per half a kilo, only to discover the crab legs appear to be stuffed with gluten. This man spent 400 yuan on mantis shrimp, only to find them hollow and filled with water upon opening. Some describe the current state of Chinese society as billions of lives have been sacrificed to toxic milk powder, oh, vaccines, contaminated classrooms, running tracks, and moldy foods. China's food crises have reached a point where not eating can lead to immediate death from starvation, but eating can oh, lead to a gosh. slow death from poisoning. The public criticizes oh. the authorities for inadequate regulations. The Chinese government's so-called food safety supervision is merely empty promises as China's food safety defenses crumble 
and the dangers of poisoned food nearly spiral out of control. The food safety issue also highlights multiple challenges in Chinese society, including a lack of information transparency, an imperfect legal environment, and declining social trust. Oh my gosh. So that, that video was by the China Observer. And uh, I, I don't even know, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to begin. I am shocked. I am shocked. I mean, I heard of meats, right? And you know, they're, they're <laughs> you know, they've got all the soy protein, you know, meats that, that look like real meat, but it's not, it's soy and they, they pass it off as being healthy for you and a better alternative. And, and maybe some of that could be partially true. Um, but if they can make designer meat, synthetic designer meat, I guess there's no stopping them. They can make anything that's out there. They can, they can replicate an eggshell. They can, they're fake eggs, fake eggs with the yolk and the egg whites and everything inside the shell. That is uncanny. Uh, I remember many, many years ago, I'm not going to say where I was traveling and somebody warned me about being, you know, to stay away from the fresh fruit at the hotel uh, for morning breakfast. And I was like, why? They said that they happened to know somebody who was working uh, or somebody who knew somebody who was working in the kitchen. And what happened was there was some instances, not all, but there was a, a batch of bad oranges that were raw. Like when you opened them up, they were rotten. So what they did is to, you know, they don't want to, you know, there's a lot of food wastage, right? In, in this particular place and uh, to, to cut back on the cost, what they did is they were able to inject some chemicals and fillers into the orange to give it its life again, to make it look like it was healthy and fresh, but it wasn't fresh. And then they would just cut that orange and you know like as slices and put it in the plate you know and pair it up with like a healthier fresher fruit you wouldn't even notice the difference I mean it's it's absolutely shocking shocking I've heard of like uh, vegetable uh, vendors you know uh, on the road that uh, inject their vegetables with various things again to prolong the life of the vegetable so they don't spoil so easy and just to keep it looking vibrant and although it's like rotten on the inside guys i i don't you know that was shocking uh I, i'd love to hear you guys comments on this but i mean fake beef fake eggs fake honey fake honeycomb i mean what next Anyways, guys, if you guys like the content, please like and share and subscribe. And um, until next time, and in the meantime and in between time, don't do anything crazy to yourself. And uh, I look forward to catching you guys on the next adventure. Cheers.